Uh, good evening, everyone. My test today is to talk about Argentina, the UK, and the Falklands Malvinas in around 20 minutes, 10 minutes. Let's see if I can manage that. And since work being taped, and I did not know that, uh, the usual <laughs> disclaimers apply. I'm speaking only on my behalf, and my opinions don't necessarily reflect those of any organizations that I represent. Additionally, the fact that I call the islands Malbi Falklands does not necessarily mean that I feel that they're British. I call them Falklands when I speak in English, just like I call them Malvinas when I speak in Spanish. It's just easier. Now, with that out of the way, let's start. I was thinking of a way to properly jumpstart this analysis, and I found this little jewel online. Oh, wait, wait, I swallowed it. There we go. So, this is a graph by the British newspaper The Sun, published in March 2015. Now, okay, I agree that The Sun is not the most respected British media outlet media outlet, media, British media outlet out there. But for the purpose of presentation, it helps get my point across. We know that in 1882, the UK and the Argentina fought a brief war over possession of the islands. The British military ultimately defeated the Argentines, but the, the government in Buenos Aires, regardless of the party in power, continues to claim that the islands are theirs, so they continue to call for negotiations. Now, in April of last year, President Cristina Kirchner went to Russia to meet with President Vladimir Putin. The two signed a number of agreements. This prompts speculation that there could be a new war over the Falklands. And some extreme um, analysts speculated that Russia could support the Argentine military against the British by providing them high-tech equipment. Hence, you can see the chart uh, that where they discussed the Argentine Air Force, that according to the, the chart, the Argentines have Mirage warplanes, they have at least 12 Sukhoi Type 24 long-range bombers from Russia, and they're going to buy Israeli Kafir warplanes. Now, anyone who has studied the Falklands War knows that the Argentine War Air Force was a critical component of the operations during that conflict. They, they disabled or sank British vessels such as the HMS Atlantic Conveyor, the HMS Coventry, or the HMS Sheffield. On the other hand, you see a British military the, uh, currently deploying the Falklands, including its vessel, the HMS Clyde, which is a key component of the UK Navy's South Atlantic Patrol strategy to protect British overseas territories in that part of the world. And now let's look at both sides in greater detail. Okay, let's start with the, I admit that the British military is not my expertise, so I'll give some general remarks about them. Back in 2015, when there were rumors that Argentina was going to get Russian warplanes, there were reports that the UK was going to beef up its military presence in the islands. However, at least from what I can tell from open sources, this has not happened. The only acquisition that I can tell that has happened are the purchase of new Giraffe AMB radars, a deal that, has co that will cost around $74 million. I have not heard of any new troop, troop um, deployments to the islands. The number of the personnel there remains around 1,400. And the only vessel permanently deployed there is the HMS Clyde. In other words, if the UK government perceived any Argentine rearmament as a threat, apart from a couple of declarations by British policymakers, no major deployments have occurred. Okay, Argentina's Air Force. The Argentine Air Force actually retired its Mirage fleet in September 2015, some of which date back to the 1970s and flew during the Falklands War. We're talking about eight Mirage Type 3, eight or nine Type 5. The problem is that the Air Force is now without a cornerstone of its air defense strategy, as the government simply does not have the money to buy new warplanes. So you remember how in the first chart I talked that the Sun showed that they had purchased apparently warplanes from Israel and, and, the, and Russia? None of this has happened. They have not leased any bombers from Russia. They have not bought any Kafir planes from Israel. The situation is actually so dire that when President Mauricio Macri, the new head of state, was um, inaugurated last year, in December, I believe, Argentina had to ask neighboring Uruguay to have some of its warplanes ready to fly over Argentine airspace in case there was some kind of emergency, because the Argentines did not have enough planes of their own to fly over um, Buenos Aires. This actually happened right now when President Obama landed in Buenos Aires. Air Force One can fly up to around 14,000 14, meters. The warplanes that Argentina has right now only can fly up to eight or 9,000 meters. So they, the Argentines had to ask the US Air Force to provide a couple of F-16s to fly with Air Force One to protect uh, the plane because the Argentine warplanes simply cannot get that far up. 
Now the only now the only thing nowadays the only thing I can say about the Argentine Air Force is that they're focusing on domestic products. On the slide you can see a picture of the Pucará, a plane produced by the Argentine Fabrica Militar de Aviones, and there's another one called the Pampa Number Three. It will be the future of the cornerstone of the future of the Argentine Air Force for the next decade or so, at least from the for the for the middle or short term. Now, about the Argentine Navy, uh, they are actually doing a little bit better, at least compared to the Air Force. For example, they have successfully fixed one of their submarines, an old TR 1700 Coles and Juan. Uh, this is a diesel sub, by the way. They have also signed a deal with a shipbuilding company called Rio Santiago to, for an undetermined number of OPVs. The only but the only acquisition that actually has happened over the past 10 years or so actually happened two years ago, when the Argentines bought four vessels from Russia. They are, and I cannot pronounce this name in Russian, I apologize, Neftigas, class multipurpose ships that will be utilized for search and rescue operations and scientific research in the Antarctic. They're not warships. And they arrived, they docked in Buenos Aires just this past December. And you can see a picture of two of them over there. And unfortunately, the internet doesn't want to work with me, otherwise I will show you this really cool video. But um, what the Argentine Navy is doing is they actually are testing some of their old missiles. Back in February, they tested six M38 Exocet missiles that date back to the 1980s. They, set, um, they fired them against a decommissioned tanker called the Ingeniero Julio Kraus. Now, this is what happened. They fired, and this is what I've learned from open sources and asking some of my friends. They fired six missiles. Two hit the target and exploded. Three missed the target and they flew all and they kept going. And one exploded before it hit the target. It actually explode, exploded up in the air. So we're talking about 12-6, a 33% success ratio. And then they sent a submarine uh, to uh, send a to fire a torpedo to, for the killing shot. Um, I see some people here in uniform, and some of you may deal with military testing, so you can, I will leave it up to you to discuss how to interpret this test, whether a 33% success ratio on missile testing is good or not. It's probably not, but I should, you know, I gotta give him the benefit of the doubt. And okay, so very quickly, what has been going on in Argentina lately? Uh, well, they have a new head of state, like I said. Uh, he was Mauricio Macri was inaugurated last December. He seems to be pushing for a one 180 degree turn uh, when it comes to Argentine foreign policy. He has split agreements with Russia on hold. For example, Argent Russia was going to help Argentina build a nuclear energy plant and a hydropower plant. They these deals are currently being revised, is the terminology that, that uh, the Argentinos are using. Nevertheless, in spite of this change in leadership, the Falklands issue is part of Argentine national identity. So it will be political suicide for any Argentine head of state to not declare that the islands are Argentine every now and then. Hence, it came as no surprise that President Macri asked the British government for negotiations over the, Fal over the islands this past January the 3rd. However, I will stress once again that this is meant for internal consumption. Macri will be heavily critiqued by the military and by any opposition party for not being patriotic enough if he did not declare now and then every five months or so that the Argentines, that the, Argent, that the islands are Argentine and you know the UK should start jumpstart negotiations, blah blah blah. As a response to Macri's request, the, the British Secretary of Defense, Michael Fallon, went to the Falklands in February. This is the fourth, the first time in 14 years that SecDef from the UK has gone to those islands. So this is not coincidence or routine. This was the response from the UK government to the Argentines, that they were willing to discuss anything about the islands except for sovereignty. Um, so moreover, the UK, the, the US, the Argentina, I'm sorry, is approaching the US. As we all know, President Obama is right now in Argentina. When they met yesterday, the U.S. leader said that the United States, and I'm quoting him, the United States stands ready to work with Argentina through the historic transition in any way that we can. Now, even though the President Macri and Obama did not talk about the islands, that was not part of the agenda, the Falklands issue will not go away, particularly as, if, as energy companies like Rockhopper continue to find oil off the shores of the islands. Just last January, in the Isabel deep well, Rockhopper discovered oil. We're talking about, and according to open sources, 480 million barrels of oil, give or take a million. 
Obviously, if there's some kind of oil reserves, significant oil reserves, this is going to push the Argentines to demand more eagerly for some kind of negotiation to discuss sovereignty over the islands so they can profit from it. Um, so, some final remarks since I'm running out of time, probably. As I said in my remarks, uh, the Falcons are part of Argentina's national identity, and the 1982 war is still very fresh in the minds of the population. So the government, regardless of the party in power, will continue to request for negotiations. We're essentially talking about, we're essentially at the diplomatic stalemate, because the UK is not going to discuss sovereignty, particularly as a 2013 referendum in the islands demonstrated that most of the population that live in those islands want to become, remain part of the UK. In terms of the possibility of war, both sides are actually fairly militarily weak. And I, I'm sorry if I offend anybody from the UK, but no, they're relatively weak, at least compared to 10 years ago which means that the likelihood of an Argentina-provoked attack to be planned is minimal. As they do not have the equipment for it, like an Air Force, or the willingness to engage in a new conflict, as they will likely suffer a new defeat. The window for a successful Argentine attack will close in the, couple, in the coming years, as the UK, the UK military expands again with its new carrier, its F-35 warplanes, etc. Et I will stress once again that the February Exocet missile testing should be regarded not as aggressive in any way, shape, or form. This is just the Argentines trying to, Argentine military trying to show to use some of its old equipment because they cannot afford to buy new ones from any kind of um, outside source. President Macri will hopefully bring mo a more constructive dialogue with London, however he will continue to request negotiations over the islands. Moreover, I should add that the islands should be inevitably placed in the global great game. Case in point, the 2015 suspicions that Russia was going to somehow support Argentina if the Argentina tried to attack the islands or invade them once again. And yes, I'm going to conclude by talking about the, that saying that the, yes, there's always a case of some kind of unforeseen incident that will provoke some kind of incident, uh, you know, jumpstart um, tensions. Yes, so a few weeks ago, uh, the Argentine Coast Guard shot and sank a Chinese fishing vessel that was illegally fishing in its EEC. I could foresee a similar incident with the islands. For example, if an exploratory vessel from some oil company deviates a bit too much and enters Argentine territorial waters. I do not think that Argentina will attack this hypothetical vessel, but it could jumpstart an unnecessary diplomatic incident. So, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight, and I'm certainly open to any and all questions, comments, and all respectful criticisms. Thank you. I'm going to keep that here because I like Normandy. Sure. Thanks. Um, you mentioned the Pucará and the Pampa Three. The um, the one I didn't notice you mentioning was um, I thought there was about a squadron of A four Qs that were also assembled at the Fabrica Militar, right? Like they have in... seven of those, and they're not operational right now. Oh, oh no, okay. okay. They have they don't have spare parts for them, so they're all grounded. Um, I forget what base they're at, at, but actually, when Obama went to Argentina, they were talking about how, if they can fly some of those, but none of them, as far as I can tell, are operational. So they had to request the, the U.S. Air Force for, for support. So, so the quick follow-up then would be the, 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 the factory, the Fabrica Militar in Cordoba, it's, what, is there anything going on there now? Not that I can tell, no. They're, they have plans to upgrade the Pampas and the Pucaras, but even that deal, as far as I can tell from some of my friends, even that deal that is kind of shady. Right now, the, the military industry is, Argentine military industry is pretty um, in dark conditions, only jump starting thanks to Macri. The only deal that I know has been signed is, is Rio Santiago to, to fabricate the OPBs, to construct the OPBs. When it comes to airplanes, they're going to try to fix the, the Pampas and the, and, the, and the Pucara, but even that may not happen for the immediate future. So they're just relying on whatever few ship, few warplanes are still operational, but definitely the ones that you're talking about. I looked them up and they're not operational. I think there's like seven of them. Two rhetorical questions here. Uh, first, what's Argentina going to do when a Chinese Coast Guard cutter shows up and takes station um, in Argentine uh, EEZ? And secondly, is there any linkage between the, the apparent last-minute decision for the president to visit Argentina with the – does that have any connection to uh, the uh, fish, Chinese fishing boat incident? 
Uh, I will answer your second question first. No, the Argentine piece has been tra has was planned months in advance. So it was just like a coincidence that happened before the the, Argent the, the Chinese fishing boat incident. When it comes to if China is going to deploy any kind of, if China, the Chinese Navy somehow appears off the coast of Argentina, the Coast Guard appears um, in the in Argentina's EC, Argentina will probably just back down a little bit. And just because they don't have the the the, the maritime best, the, the naval platforms to somehow like challenge the Chinese, one, and two, they um, the Argentina knows that the, the rest of the of the rest of Latin America doesn't have its back. Pretty much, it's, Latin America is not going to support um, Argentina over against China, just like they didn't really support Argentina against the UK back in '82. So for Peru, where I'm from, that was gave the Exocet and the Mirage warplanes, or and that you know, Chile actually supported the UK during the war. So we, if, we, if, we, if push comes to shove, when it comes to the China and Argentina, Argentina is just going to go at it alone. Uh, with that said, I don't think the Argent China is going to try to threaten Argentina in any way, shape, or form, just because there's so much commerce between the two countries. Argentine meat, uh, wines, uh, soybeans, they all go to, a lot of them go to to um, China. Additionally, China is actually building a not not spaceport, like not spaceport, but like a space station in southern Argentina, and they don't want to put that deal into any kind of jeopardy. So there will probably some, be some tension, some some declarations, but they're not going to risk any kind of uh, confrontation at all. This might be a little bit out of your area of expertise, but how prevalent is illegal fishing broadly in Argentine waters? especially Chinese vessels that are doing the fishing, and what is the perception of that encroachment by the Argentine populace? Do they, is that a big issue for them, or is that, a, is that not so much? They're not aware of it. That will be the short answer. I think like when it comes to China and Argentina, they're all like, I mean, the media, especially during the, during the Kirchner dynasty, which lasted 12 years when they were in power, both Cristina and, and Nestor, rest in peace, uh, he was here he a few years ago. So they, they were pretty much pro-China. Pro, pro I don't think that they would have tried to like, minimize any kind of, uh, of tensions, any kind of bad, bad propaganda, bad news should have been like, you know, put, put under the... But that's under, under the car carpet. When it comes to illegal fishing, how big of a prevalent is, a, is it a problem? I know that in Peru it's a problem. We have not only from China, but from all other global powers. You know, it can be like, um, you know, from, from countries that, that we don't really know that much about that going to Peru or going to Ecuador or Colombia. We know that's going on, but our coast guards are very li have very limited um, platforms that they can like deploy, especially the, the, the Argentine. If the Argentines ever build the OPVs, maybe they can like, uh, protect their, their 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 waters. Uruguay has the same problem. Uruguay is trying to build right now to buy OPVs right now from Austal, Lausen, or DCNS, that that French company. They're trying to figure out some of them just to fight uh, illegal fishing, for, not only from China but you know from like um, Brazilian fishing vessels. Also, they just want to go further down. So it's, it is a problem, um, but nobody really. It hasn't become, it hasn't reached the boiling point just yet. And again, no, most of the population doesn't really know, it's not worth it because, again, we have other problems to, to deal with. Just a quick follow up. So, does this incident, the unforeseen incident, mark a change in policy, whether as to what actions the vessels will take uh, and or the publicity surrounding those actions? There have been cases, for example, last year there was a case in Venezuela where, it, where there was a discovery. Um, that was the name of the of the vessel. I forget why it was. I think it was from Chevron. It might have been from Shell. That it, it went from Guyana into Venezuelan territorial waters, and the two countries are kind of fighting them that, that particular area, the maritime block. And there was the, the Venezuelan Navy actually boarded the vessel and sort of like you know seized it. I mean, it didn't really, it didn't really harm anybody. It didn't really attack the crew or anything like that. But I mean, that could happen in Argentina. They could like seize one of the vessels if it's like an exploratory vessel from 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 some kind of oil company in, in, in the UK. I don't think anything's going to escalate, but then again, there could be, be a case of some kind of trigger-happy uh, pilot in one of the helicopters that decides to shoot. We're still not really sure if the Coast Guard um, helicopter that shot at the, at the Chinese fishing vessel, if that was actually an order that it got from, from upstairs, or it was a more like 
the captain or the pilot just making a, a decision right on, on on the fly, as as they as they say. But Argentina's kind of just rolling with it and saying, you know what, we sank it because it was now in our EC, and you know what's China going to do about it? Um, I think that's the that, that's the answer, answer answer I can give. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.